Awesome. Welcome back to HDO's Virtual Congress 2022. Um, and welcome especially to this special two-hour session um, that better accommodates um, those of us in Asia, Australia, and New Zealand. Thank you for joining us. Um, these talks will each have some time at the end for questions. So please write any questions into the chat function when ready, and we'll go through them once the speaker has finished their presentation. First up, I'd like to welcome Jack, who will be sharing his personal story of having HD in China. Jack, thank you so much for your vulnerability and sharing your story. And I know that you're gonna do a great job um, and no doubt it will resound with a lot of us. So over to you and thank you very much. Okay. Uh, dear HD families, good day. Uh, my name is Xinren from China, and you can call me Jack as well. This you can you can see the picture from in the PPT, and uh, this is a family picture we took last year. And uh, actually, my mom could not control her facial expressions at that time already because of HD, and uh, it was very hard to take pictures for her. Uh, thanks to the patience and help of the photographer, we finally got really uh, nice pictures. Uh, and my mom actually looks the most beautiful one among us. And um, my presentation is divided into two parts. Part one is encounter HD, and part two is challenging HD. And let's start from part one encounter HD. And the, this is the G testing report on my mom, which did in August 2020 and her CAG is 43. And uh, I did the G testing in May of 2020 before her with the result of CAG 41. And uh, I'm the first person in my family who did the G testing and to know the reasons why I did it, I would like to introduce myself and my family first. This is some uh, introduction about me. I'm 34 years old this year, and I got my master's degree of international relations in the Catholic University of Korea in 2014. And I'm working for Post School Group now and as a sales manager and live in Shanghai, China now. I have a lot of hobbies. I like uh, swimming, skiing, horse riding, cooking, traveling, drawing, and so on. And now I'm also a volunteer of Chinese Huntington's Disease Association. I found I was from an HD family since 2020 years. Before that, I have never thought that not only me, but also even my families are HD and uh, often disease families. It is an inconceivable thing that I was the first person in my family who did the G detection and got proved to be HD positive with a CAG of 41. I still remember that the day I got the report. And my first thought was, why not lottery? Because lottery could be easier to get than this. And to know the reason why I uh, did the G detection shall be started to introduce from my mom's family. Uh, this, um, this is my grandmother and her seven children, the picture. So my grandmother has seven children and my mom is the sixth child. My grandma passed away in her 63 years old in 1999. And at that time, I was still an elementary school student. Uh, she was a so kind person in my memory. I can dimly remember that she needed to walk with a walking stick in her old age. And she ate a lot of painkillers in the long term. She almost had no dance simple terms, but uh, she got weak in her 60 years old and uh, had to be completely bedridden for her last three years. At that time, no one thought it could be HD. This is the family tree. And uh, from our family tree, 
we can see there are 40 people in total who may be connected with HD. Among them, only my mom, my elder brother, and I did the G testing and with the result of HD positive. My second uncle and the fifth uncle have been guessed as HD positive because they have obvious symptoms. And for the rest relatives, only my fifth uncle's little son accepted my advice and did it with HD negative results, it's so lucky. And for the other relatives, they are not willing to do it. And this is actually, I think, one of the social problems in HD community in China. That is, a lot of potential HD carriers are not willing to know HD and face HD and do preparations to avoid the risks in advance. I tried my best to persuade them to do G testing, but I failed. For my grandmother's seven children, my elder uncle in a car accident in his 50 years, so we cannot judge if he got HD. And the second child is my elder aunt, and she is 70 years old this year, and she is healthy without any HD symptoms. And the third child is my second uncle, and he also died in his 33 years old. And before that, he had mental diseases in his 50 years old with propensity for violence. He drank a lot and always quarreled in the family. And what worse was that he always also threatened his wife to kill her and he drove his son out. So the family relationship was so bad at that time. In his last five years, uh, compared with the dance symptoms, it was more likely to be shaking actions. Uh, um, is, is the symptoms are just like um, shaking actions. <clears throat> In his, uh, um, and the, uh, but all of us thought these symptoms may lead by alcoholism because he drank a lot long termly. Now we can predict that. Uh, he, he inherited HD, and a lot of strange actions he did before shall be forgiven because these were led by HD actually. He should be treated earlier at that time. And the fourth child and fifth child are my third uncle and fourth uncle, and they are around 65 years old now without any symptoms. The sixth child is my mom. And my mom began to show my mental disorders in her 55 years old in 2016. Before mental diseases, she might have some symptoms after 40 years old, like to be uh, emotional easily and uh, easy to be angry and quarreled with people around with any reasons we thought it was just little thing. Uh, and she also got a suspicious frame of mind symptoms around 40 years old. For example, she always suspected that my dad stole her money when she could not find her money. But actually it was just because she hid the money at some places she got. Uh, and when she was 55 years old, the symptoms became serious and she got heavy delusion and always said there were a lot of dead persons she knew around her. And she saw three killers which were going to kill her with guns. She hid under the desk and could not sleep for three days. And she tried to kill herself for three times. So at that time in 2015, we sent her to the hospital and she had to be diagnosed as schizophrenia. And I picked her and my father to Shanghai from hometown to live with me and began to cure her and uh, take good care of her. She began to eat um, risperidol and uh, alanzapine to control her symptoms. And it had been controlled very well from 2015 to now. During this period, she did not show mental disease problems anymore, but we found that she gradually lost her basic living skills. She always looked down 
and um, almost not be initiative to talk um, and could not go outside by herself because she could not find the way back by, by herself. And she is lazy to dress up her also, which is totally different from her before, as she used to be a very exquisite person who was good at dancing, singing, playing piano and saxophone. And she had been no longer be capable of enjoying the things she loved. And she always fall over herself without rhyme or reason and got hurt. And her intelligence is just like a child now. And what she can do now is just eating and getting dressed by herself. And then the only things she's doing daily are sleeping, watching TV and taking a walk in the afternoon for one hour. So from 2021, I found that she began to show slight involuntary movement in her fingers and legs. And sometimes she clapped her hands or used her hands to beat her face flashly without any consciousness of by herself. And she also got slight uh, uh, dysphagia problem. Even though she got sick now, she still thinks for others always, such as when friends and relatives come to my house to visit. She always sat far away from us. And one day I asked the mom, why not sit close to talk with us? And she said, um, I got sick and I'm eating medicines and I'm dirty. She used dirty here. And she said, I do not want to affect others. So I really got moved after uh, I heard these words. And I also feel very regretful that I used to misunderstand her strange actions before and quarreled with her a lot at that time. So the seventh child and also my fifth uncle was the reason why I did the G-detection for myself first. My fifth uncle was checked out with encephalotrophy in 2018 and around he's 53 years old and he had a car accident in 2019. After that, uh, he began to develop some symptoms like uh, discomesis, delusion, and he had a difficulty in walking as well. His son and also my cousin took him to the big hospitals in Beijing to check, and uh, the doctors, they got the conclusion of suspecting to be HD. And they told my cousin to do gene detections and said the disease cannot be cured so far. Since this disease cannot be cured, my cousin thought it was unnecessary to, to do the G detection and just gave it up. But he do share this information with us in the family chat room. And among all of the relatives in the chat room, only I noted this disease and began to look up the researches and the literature about this disease and found that my mom might not be simply mental disease and also could possible to be HD. Also in 2020, I found myself also had tick problems sometimes, and I got slight difficulties in reading, which I did not have before. And sometimes I could not control my emotion. So after much inner struggling, in May 2020, I went to the hospital and did the G-detection for myself first, and proved to be that all of my speculations were totally right. The CAG is 41, and in August, I took my mom to do the detection too, and her CAG is 43. And this is the basic information on my family regarding HD. And I also got depressive disorders for several months after I knew I also have HD genes. I ate sertraly for two weeks and I found that was too heavy for me. So I stopped and began to learn how to accept it. At the same time, I began to accept the traditional Chinese medicine and acupuncture therapy for both my mom and me to make us feel better. So the second part of my speaking is challenging HD. And these parts are divided into volunteer, traveling with family love, and no HD deeply. After being depressive for several months, I finally got a clue conclusion that uh, since this is a ineradicable fact which cannot be changed, then it is much better to do the meaningful things as many as I can to make my life much more colorful 
in our cases, even though the destiny made us not to choose our life of life, we do can broaden the value of our life by ourselves. Uh, so the first thing I did was to join Chinese HD Association as a translating volunteer. Um, and uh, what I'm mainly doing is that I translate the newest papers and articles about HD from English to Chinese and uh, share those newest information with HD community in China. So by estimation, there are around 10,000 and 30,000 HD patients in China. And I think it is a quite meaningful thing that I translate the new scientific researches and efforts to them in time and give them hope and inspiration. This is a picture of uh, Ms. Cao Xi and her mom. Ms. Cao Xi is the founder of Chinese HD Association and she's also from an HD family. I was moved by her stories of establishing HD Association in China and what she is doing and making effort for Chinese HD communicate, community also shocked me a lot. Chinese HD Association has established a national network of patients and uh, specialists and helped around 3,000 patients and family members so far. And its goal is to help and support HD patients and the families in China to improve uh, medical service and the lives of everyone affected by HD. Therefore, I thought that I should join this meaningful association and help with what I can. And these are some of the uh, these are some of the articles that um, I have translated. The newest one I translated is Our Drug May Change the Story for Huntington Lowery. And I still remember that uh, how happy the patients and their families were after reading this news in our HD community chatting room. And the second thing I did was to take my mom and dad to travel as much as we can while my mom can still walk and move normally. Uh, so each time, actually, my mom were not willing to travel out, but my dad and I encouraged her to be with us. We have been a lot of places, and we do enjoy the family love from each traveling and had a lot of uh, happy memories together. These are some of the photos I took for them while traveling. And at the same time, my tension and anxiety had also been released a lot while traveling. It turned out uh, that I was right because my mom cannot go out from go out from this year. So with her development of the disease, so it is totally a right thing to take time to do what we want in time, I think. And the third thing I did was to know HD deeply as much as I could and try my best to improve the life quality of my mom and I, and at the same time, do enough preparations for the risks in the future, which could be led by HD, such as family financial crisis and how to take care of my mom and my elder brother and as well as me if we all got sick. To know HD deeply, uh, I took part in HD community forums actively, such as HD patients meeting held in, uh, in the 2nd of March to 2021, Shanghai, China. I shared my experience as a team leader in this discussion with other patients and their families, and the staff of Ruchi Group in China also joined this meeting. Uh, I was also in charge of taking photos for the meeting. By communicating with other patients and families in the meeting, I knew more details about HD in real life. And it is quite an important thing that we shall help each other. In addition, um, I also took part in the Huntington's disease therapeutic forum held in Guangzhou, China, held by Chinese HD Network and Chinese HD Association in 6 November 2021. In the forum, I knew a lot of scientific researches 
which were studied and developed by Chinese scientists and doctors, such as Professor Yinsen from Jinan University reported her study HD knock in peak model and the treatment. They have succeeded to build a build an HD experiment model from pigs which owes big brains and much more close to humans compared with mouse. And the professor Fu Qingling studied the exome uh, therapy for Huntington disease and the neurodegenerative di diseases. And the professor Guo Xing from Nanjing Medical University studied the mitochondrial quality control and the Huntington, Huntington's disease. Professor Chen Xi studied the application in vivo self-assembled SIRAN4 treatment of Huntington's disease. Even though uh, these scientific studies are so hard to comprehend actually, but um, this do encourage me a lot uh, that HD problem has been studying and solving by the world now, and we shall have hope for our life. To improve the life quality of my mom and me, I took my mom to see three top doctors in HD field in China from different hospitals and took part in their HD scale evaluation programs, clinical volunteer registration program and uh, cerebral CT scanning program for HD youth. And I tried to find other ways to alleviate the symptoms led by HD. So I read an article by accident that Chinese acupuncture can also be uh, helpful um, while curing HD. Then I visited the top hospital of traditional Chinese medicine in Shanghai with my mom, and we began to accept the acupuncture treatment every Saturday, and it has been lasted for one and a half years now. Acupuncture cannot cure HD, but it can do help my mom and me feel better, such as my mom becomes more energetic and talkative, and my depression has also been cured by doing acupuncture. Acupuncture's purpose is also to control the dopamine, so it do work in nervous system diseases. And uh, this is a picture that my mom was accepting acupuncture treatment. Besides, I also uh, asked my mom to insist on taking a walk every day regularly to keep healthy. And for me, I was doing fitness three times a week and yoga once a week to keep healthy. And I began to try different sports uh, as well, such as the horse riding, swimming, skiing, and so on. And I also find a way to release my nervous emotion that is drawing uh, in the oranges. The, and these are the orange drawings by me recently, and uh, this do work for me. So I think different people can find different ways to release your emotion. And to avoid uh, risks in the future, I begin to work more hard and try to make more money while I'm still healthy, since money is the basic support of life. And I also bought commercial insurance for my family and myself in case of unknown risks about other diseases. At the same time, I began to study the government's social security policy. Uh, what had been achieved excitedly was that when Ostendo was listed as new drug approval in China uh, in 2020, HD community in China wrote letters to the National Health Insurance Administration and calling for Oscando to access to medical insurance reimbursement. And we also selected the local rep representatives to talk with the local health insurance bureau face to face to let the government officials to know more about HD marginal groups and our appeals. I had talked with the Health Insurance Bureau of Shanghai office as a representative, and what we did had great achievement. Ostendo has been approved to extend the scope of medical insurance reimbursement, and the patients who need Ostendo just need to pay for around 30% of the medicine fees, which do reduce a lot of burdens for HD families in China. So it was so great uh, that we did it and uh, we achieved it. And to avoid risks in the future, I even poured out all of my 
wisdom teeth in case that they get paid for in the future while I got sick last week. So uh, that's all of the content I would like to share today. I think that uh, HD is not just a personal problem. Um, it is a problem which needs to be solved by all of the global communities together. And I believe that nothing is impossible to a willing heart and let's just do it. And thank you so much. Awesome, thank you so much, Jack. Uh, really good to hear about your family. Um, and you're right, your mum is absolutely beautiful. So thank you for sharing photos so we could see who okay. you're talking about. And thank you also for sharing your story. Um, so we have, we've got three minutes. So if anybody had a question, feel free to throw one up in the chat. Um, otherwise, Jack, I was really interested in why do you think many of your family members have decided not to get tested? Pardon, sorry, I didn't catch your questions. Please repeat again. Okay. Actually, I'm going to skip that one out and ask Claire's question. She's just asked, what are you most proud of? Oh, what I'm most proud of? Actually, I'm most proud of my mom because, because uh, uh, as, I told you, as I told you in this content, I feel very regretful to uh, to misunderstand her before because she really did a lot of, uh, she, she used to be very normal and kind person and good person. But uh, in her mid age, she did some strange things. Actually that because of HD, but we didn't know that. And, uh, and I, I, would, I just quarreled with her a lot. So uh, I feel very regretful about this. And uh, I'm proud of her because she did a lot for us. For our family. Awesome. She would absolutely love to hear that answer and would no doubt be very proud of you. And so, Jack, we're going to wrap up there because um, we've got Mega coming, Omega coming up next. Yeah. Um, but just want to okay. thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much for everything thank that you, you so give much. that you give back to Huntington's. Um, and also, I really like your mantra around it is much better to do the meaningful things and as many as, as you can. So good luck on your journey as you go out doing all those meaningful things. And we're um, so proud to have you as part of the Huntington's community. So thanks, Jack. Thank you. Cool. Now I'd like to welcome 